What is up everybody, Zach is back with another episode of Journey to One Million Dollars. And yesterday wasn't all that bad, I mean we had the Jay Powell speech, things opened up pretty pretty bad for tech and growth and semiconductors, but uh, we soon got past that and moved to the greener pastures, if you will. Well, let's go ahead and jump right into it because the, um, the write-up is available. So, go ahead and check out the links in the description, prostockadvice.com slash blog, and you can find this uh, write-up. Go ahead and pull that up on your screens, if you will. And while you're down there, smash that like button one million times, because we need to get to one million dollars. And that's going to help me more than you guys realize, so please go ahead and do that and share it around if you find this advice and these write-ups worthwhile. So, anyways guys, I was actually up 2.77% percent yesterday finished up I mean semis moved up quite a lot tech was pretty flat um, but actually the SOXL the Soxel did overall really well and man finished up 18,000 look check this out the picks from yesterday actually all did very well <laughs> I think you know the chances of the the three picks from one day just going up quite a lot the next day it's pretty slim <laughs> just just for anybody really um, so that, that's always pretty cool. But anyways, and these were the two that we added to the watch list. And the Sock Soul was, obviously, we've been investing in that for a while. And, uh, but yeah, it had a, it had a very good day yesterday, just like we're, I was saying before. And that's pretty much what carried my portfolio. But it was up 5.3%. Volkswagen just keeps just turning out them bucks. Actually, not the bucks, but the euros. Well, I guess you can call euros bucks. I'm not even really sure about that, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, nevertheless, Volkswagen almost up 30% yesterday. That's pretty crazy. Um, that's really crazy. And I mean, let's let's take a look at that. Markets are a little bit down at this time of the video, but hey, that Jay Powell can turn things around, I guess. Let's go ahead and look at the Volkswagen really quick. But yeah, it was up 29.25% yesterday, which is crazy. And I was looking at like before that candle I already felt like it was going up a lot and then we just had a boom right up to 40 uh, 4872 actually so yeah I went from 34 to 48 almost before it pulled back a little bit but man that is crazy I mean Volkswagen cars are pretty nice but really I like the Audis and, and stuff like that new electric Audi would be really really nice but anyways that one did really well um, and then also the FL, FLGT, the genetics company that we we're talking about, also was up 12% yesterday, which is really good. Uh, they had the contract with the CDC. Go ahead and check out yesterday's blog post and the video uh, so you know what I'm talking about. And then, of course, the Soxel. The only one from yesterday that didn't uh, do well was the CCIV. But keep in mind... I want this to pull back closer to the 50 moving average before we really get into it. So that's okay. Um, of course, dollar cost average is probably going to be your friend. But if it can dip down here a little bit, uh, it would be it would be better. So I still haven't made any moves on it. As you know, if you're following along on the Twitter, I do post all the uh, actual trades that I'm doing there. But yeah, hey. It is what it is. So it was, it was a pretty good day yesterday, actually. And I actually got into a FLGT vertical spread and it was up like 10%. So it's not bad. Overall, not bad. But anyway, so today we're going to be adding a couple more to the watch list. Uh, the first one is TTWO. This is Take-Two Interactive Software, Inc., which is an American video game holding company based in New York City and founded by Ryan Brandt in September 1993. This is the one that owns Rockstar and 2K, like, you know, Rockstar's Grand Theft Auto, which you probably heard of. Um, and they just keep making so much money with that because of the online play, which is really, it's quite, uh, astonishing because a lot of the triple A's they'll, or any video game for that, they'll make the, make the money when they first release it for the most part. Uh, but they just keep delivering content and a lot of online play. So Rockstar has done very, very, very well, even though they haven't even released a new Grand Theft Auto in a while now. Um, but there's it's still a cash cow, although it is less now though. Um, but yeah, I mean, that is really good. Also, 2K, the basketball the basketball game. So yeah, and then this uh, TTWO delivered a 69% return in 2020, reaching a new high of around $200 at the start of the year. 
Investors are hopeful that the elevated player engagement uh, trends during the pandemic will carry into 2021. Yeah, I mean, and that's that. That's what I was taking off of my due diligence and research. Um, and that's what I was reading about and whatnot. Let's go ahead and take a look at this stock on the charts. So, yep, so this one did come off its high around $200. The highest, the very all-time high was $214, almost $215. Um, so I put a price target around $220. I think I can get back to that. Um, I don't think that this is this is one this is one of the big boys in video games, um, and I for one do believe that the future is very bright for online gaming, video games, especially if you can, um, you know, keep making the money, keep releasing content, the DLC, and just like you saw Roblox do, which it actually Roblox is worth more than Take Two. EA and Activision Blizzard, I believe, uh, combined. So that's just pretty insane if you think about it. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. My Roblox stock is doing all right. But nevertheless, there is take two. So I think that the um, the uh, PDE is is around 27 right now, which before it was 37, which was a little bit high for my liking uh, for a video game company like this. But now it seems to be pretty interesting. It's actually trading below the 180 day. And like I said, this is this is a big this is a big dog when it comes to video game companies, Rock, like uh, Grand Theft Auto and 2K and uh, some of the uh, their other AAA titles. I mean, those are the some of the biggest games of of the past decade. So, um, you know, take it take what you will. I mean, I'm not really the biggest fan of video games, but you know, it's hard to not pay attention to them anymore because they are doing um, they are doing really well. So I give this a risk of a four. Uh, it's lost a, quite a lot of, of its value, but I think the PDE makes sense at around 27 for me, and I could see it going back up to about 37, so I, I put a price target of 220 on this. Uh, give it a three to five months. I mean, no rush here. I wouldn't be getting weekly calls on this or anything like that. Uh, I'd be more curious to see when it crosses the 180 again and then test it as a support. I think that would be more interesting to get into a position for me. And moving on, next we have SRPT, which is Sarepta Therapeutics, Inc. And now, this is a medical research and drug development company that uh, is the leader in precision genetic medicine for rare diseases. Sarepta will soon release additional data from their Phase 2 trial on the company's next-generation Exxon Skipper, SRP5051. The treatment uses Sarepta's peptide phosphorodiamidate morpholinoalogamer. PPMO technology. So yeah, I have no idea how to pronounce that. But I did some research and um, yeah, I mean, so the phase one, I believe, it did not go very well. So if we take a look at the chart, <laughs> it just literally lost 50% of its value. But um, after my due diligence and research, I believe, I, I, I think that there is reason to believe that this should make a comeback um, after they release the data for the phase two. And let's see, there was a quote I put in here from um, a quote-unquote expert. With the stock trading near floor value of SRPT's Exxon Skipper-based business, now could be an opportune time to get involved ahead of, of PPMO data expected in uh, uh, second quarter 2021. Sorry, second quarter 2021. So, point is, they have this new technology, which is, uh, going into the phase two trial, the phase one didn't do all that well, so this is a risk of five. Uh, so, but yeah, let's see though. It's it's lost so much of its value. I mean, at that time, it was trading over hundred and seventy dollars. So, yeah, closer to like one eighty, one eighty five, one ninety almost. I think, but uh, yeah. So I think this could be an interesting moment to get into it if the phase two does go well, but it is a risk five, so it always might not go well. So you have to keep that in mind, but as long as you have the um, right expectations, then I think this could be a very interesting um, opportunity. I mean, maybe even do like a one, a 120, 140 vertical spread or 120, 130, something like that. That could really limit your risk. Of course, it would limit your upside as well. Um, you know, I've seen, I've seen stocks like this just blast off with the good uh, clinical and when the the clinical trials have come out come out good and of course you see they, they lose 50% of the value if it doesn't come out good so you just have to keep that in mind but anyways 
let's see if this bleeds off a little bit more. I mean, let's be honest, uh, no rush for this, because the results aren't coming out until the second quarter anyways. Um, you know, so it's April, May, June, something like that. Before the summertime, we should have these results out. So, hey, I mean, just get a, I don't know, maybe a six six month vertical spread on it. Five, six month vertical spread. Could be interesting. Uh, I put the price target at 170, uh, so it's about double. Uh, I would expect it to be around a 2x if the uh, phase two of the PPMO does well. But anyways, time frame is five to eight months. I mean, obviously it's supposed to be second quarter, but I'm not. I'm not taking. I'm not in a hurry whatsoever with this one, um, because it is a little bit on the risky side here. But nevertheless, let's move on. And then the last one, I'm going to officially add to the watch list. Although I'm not new to this one, and I've actually been trading it last year some, especially on on some of the run up here. Uh, but this one is definitely making its rounds. It's Plug Power Inc. is an American company engaged in the development of hydrogen fuel cell systems that replace conventional batteries in equipment and vehicles powered by electricity. So, I think most people probably are familiar with this. And actually, there was horrible news that just came out. Um, they had actually just announced the other day accounting errors in results for 2018, 2019, and the first three quarters of 2020 by their CEO, Andy Marsh. Uh, and, and he also noted that they didn't affect the underlying business, which, okay, let's be honest here. That's kind of shady, you know. Uh, I don't really feel comfortable when companies just have accounting errors that went through like two, almost two and a half years worth of accounting. Two, two and a half years worth of accounting errors. I mean, that's uh, a little bit ridiculous, guys. Do you need to hire me or one of my boys to be your new CPA or something like that? But, you know, I don't really know the details of it or anything like that. But all I know is this really sold off. But um, like I said, I'm not new to this this company. Uh, it's not not the first time I've, I've heard about it or anything like that. I've been following it for a while. And I think there's reason to believe that this CEO, Andy Marks, when he's saying that it's not affecting the un underlying business. I mean... You know, no matter if they had good or if they if they had bad intentions or not, um, it just it really doesn't look good. So I put this as a risk of a four because I tend to believe that a little bit. I think that there are some really good fundamentals in this company, um, and you know, at the very least, EV is all hype right now. Uh, it's it's just really hyped. So there could be some incredible upside to this. So, again, like the SRPT, I am not in any rush. I'm going to wait till this pulls back even more. And, I mean, let's be honest. With how bad that news was uh, that just came out on it, it could it could sell off more. So, I'm just going to wait by my time. I'm not in any rush. Uh, I'm comfortable with my positions right now. And if I were to take some more bigger positions, it's probably on uh, for options and whatnot. It's pro in the middle of it. It's probably not going to be plug. Um, so, I'm, I'm going to take my time on it. But I'm more interested once it pulls back to the 180-day moving average, and then I can see myself getting into it because, you know, eventually these things just get to a point where they're just too cheap to pass up. And I mean, we kind of saw that with tech in general uh, during this uh, this uh, transition into the cyclicals with the rising TNX. You know, eventually some of these tech names, even though there was a few days where the 10-year the uh, yield was actually going up, and um, we, we still saw the NASDAQ go up as well. So, I mean... You know, I just think that there's eventually these things get to a point that it's just too cheap to pass up. Unless you're luck and coffee, then it's a different story. Unless it's a complete scam. Actually, I have a really funny story about luck and coffee. I don't even think I have time to say that right now because this video has probably gone too long. But nevertheless, I should do a video on luck and coffee. It's so it's such a BS company. But hey, you guys already know that it's a BS company. I just knew it was a BS company way before the people in other countries other than China knew that. But hey, nevertheless, guys, keep in mind, everything's on, on a scale, a risk scale of 1 to 5. 1 is the less risky, 5 is the most risky. So, um, you know, I personally would tend to put more money into the one uh, risk 1 positions than the risk 5 because, you know, risk to reward here, guys. But anyways, go ahead and follow me on Twitter, follow me on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We're seeing... E just immense growth, just really, really fast growth, and I really appreciate you guys. You guys are literally the foundation of the ProStock community, so I really love all you guys. You've helped me out a lot, and 
if anybody wants to volunteer, I am uh, from one of the Reddit OGs, the hashtag Reddit, Reddit gang. If, if, if you want to volunteer and help me out a little bit, I would appreciate that. I am currently looking for a little bit of help on the Reddit. But anyways, guys, I trade on Weeble, two free stocks, link in the description. I will see you guys on the other side. Peace.